Hey guys, it's Janet Vosky. Today I'm going to talk about how I self-published my books. My first poetry book is titled Bones. It's a self-portrait on the front. My second book is titled X. My third book, which has been recently published, is Neon Sun. I personally don't think there is any right way to self-publish your work. I think you should do your own research and learn as much as you can in terms of what suits you and how you want to self-publish your books yourself because I think that's the whole point of self-publishing. It's basically all in your hands and that's the most exciting part. One of the very first things I would love to say is do not rush. <laughs> I know you're probably so excited and so passionate about what you want to be doing and what you want to be publishing, but it is so important not to rush for many different reasons. One of which is you don't want to make a mistake and you don't want to fasten the pace on something where looking back on it and trying to relive that is going to make you think to yourself, I wish I did things differently. The self-publishing process can actually move very quickly. If I can picture it a certain way, it's like savoring a meal. Picture your favorite meal and how you would eat that versus something you don't particularly enjoy. Your poetry or whatever you are trying to self-publish is this thing, your favorite food that you can't wait to eat, but at the same time you want to savor it. You should have that mentality towards that. So for me anyway, personally, I will take my time with the meal and really enjoy it. <laughs> Similarly, because this is your passion, be patient and enjoy it. Something else I would recommend you do is shop around for the different websites that you can choose to self-publish through. I self-published my books through Ingram Spark because through all my research and what I learned and what I wanted, I felt that Ingram Spark worked perfectly for me. I also looked at different reviews online in terms of what the books looked like and their quality, and again, Ingram Spark ticked all the boxes for me. There are many different things you could be looking at in your self-publishing journey, but the main things for me were pricing, whether or not I could use or buy my own ISBN, as well as specific printing for Australia and the way that would work for me living where I do. You could really do this at any point during your self-publishing journey, but I think you should also be considering whether you feel comfortable enough to format your own book, edit your own book, do the illustrations yourself if that's something you want to add to your book. There are many different facets to self-publishing, particularly in Word or InDesign or whatever program you are deciding to use, that you may need to ask for professional help in terms of timing. So if you know you're going to have your book out at a certain time, you kind of have to backtrack with the timeline and make sure that you're giving the freelancer or the editor, whoever you are offloading your work to, enough time to actually consider or review your work. For all three of my books, I did them very differently, but at the same time, I only hired one professional, which was an editor for all three of my books. I think for me personally, having an editor made me feel a little bit more confident in not only the grammar, spelling, but for everything to... <laughs> For everything to be English. <laughs> Something that I thought about as well, particularly being an Australian, was that most things are quite Americanized. So I was very conscious of that in my work and trying not to make it so Americanized because I am Australian and did want to retain, I guess, my root and where I'm from. An example of what I mean is the use of the word gasoline and petrol. It's so easy to just say gasoline because that's what we hear all the time, but we do typically say petrol. This isn't something you have to do, but it was just something that I wanted to do for my work. Another thing to consider when giving your work to a professional to continue would be their budget. So just make sure that it's aligned in your budget. You look at their previous work or look at their reviews to just make sure that everything's okay. Again, this goes back to not rushing your work. Make sure you have enough time to really prepare, review and assess every aspect of the work before you upload it and publish it. I probably should have done a Q&A just to make sure that I'm answering all the questions that you guys may have. But something else I think is important is if you think you may print more than one book would be to consider the size of the book. I have briefly touched on this in previous videos, but I'll give you an example. So this was the very first poetry book that I self-published. It was published in 2019. You may or may not have noticed that this one that I just showed you is different to the one that I showed you at the start of the video. Yeah. Let's talk about this. <laughs> I will also show you my second poetry book, X which again looks different to the one I showed you at the start of the video. But the reason why I'm showing you this is to consider the sizes that you want to have for your books because previously this is what my books looked like. 
This is my first poetry book. This is my second poetry book. I did have my own reason to printing these two books differently. It was all in the meaning behind the emotion within the poetry of my books, but I'm telling you this to learn from my mistakes <laughs> because I reprinted both Bones and X in 2021. So last year I reprinted my first poetry book and my second poetry book just for this reason. I made sure that it was going to align with my third book. So something I would love for you to consider is the size of your book. Make sure that if you are considering looking at printing different books in the future, just something maybe, maybe you don't mind having completely different sizes and types of your book. But for me, I just love that they're all in alignment now. They're all the same size, they're all paperback and someone wanted to buy all three it would be like having a set. I'm so sorry if I'm speaking so quickly. I get so passionate when I talk about this stuff. <laughs> Something I have always done with any of my creative works is to also consider white space. I think you can tell. I, I love white space. I love the way an image or the words on the book can appear based on how it's designed and how much white space you allow yourself. So when it comes to the book cover, I would highly recommend Again, this does come down to preference, but for me and the way I like my books to look, I just love having that use of white space. So sometimes I also see questions like, what should I put on my book cover? How do I know what kind of book cover it should be? And these questions aren't directed to me. I just see these questions online. So I just thought I would give my opinion on the matter. I think white space is important when it comes to design because it draws your attention to one specific thing on the book cover. So as an example, all you really see is immediately you're drawn to this body and the emotions you feel through this particular image, as well as the title of the book and my name as the author's name. Similarly with my second book, again, use of white space. That's me. <laughs> Subject is on the front cover. She's facing the sun. The, so the title of the book name is almost in the direction of her viewpoint. So naturally with any image, if you see the subject is looking in a certain direction, you tend to automatically gaze to that direction to see if something's there. So having that in the back of my mind, I thought I would love to have the X in a similar line of sight to where I was looking. And then finally for Neon Sun, it was very different from the first two because it's not a photo. <laughs> and I actually taught myself how to do this by watching a YouTube video on repeat and repeat and repeat until I got it right and until it was my level of perfection. Basically, I think for me, um, why I chose the different images and the different graphics that I did for my books was because of the emotion within the book. So Bones was a very dark, heavy period for me. It's about a breakup and a deep loss that I felt and navigating my way through the different stages of grief. So naturally, I decided for the book to be very dark and quite literally be a self-portrait where the emotion was making you feel the vulnerability that I most definitely felt through that period. With X, similarly, because it's me on the cover, I had to decide how my body language was going to be in terms of how people may read that and understand what the book is possibly about. This book is about liberation, finding yourself, coming of age almost. So understanding that I knew I wanted it to be a little bit more fluid in my body language as well as not necessarily showing my face because I wanted the reader to feel like I was writing about their life or that, that they could relate it to themselves. So I didn't want to put my face on it. The other thing with X is there are contrasting colors. I'll just show you. So at the top, you see the sky, there's a little moon there. <laughs> It also plays with shadows, which I think is a very cool thing to do if you have the capacity or photography skills or if you could hire a photographer to do something like that for you because it essentially shows the X, which is the title of my book as well. But yes, something that I uh, was driven to portray with this cover is the contrast of emotion. So it is about finding liberty and feeling that freedom as well as acknowledging that loss because this book is also quite personal and details a lot about my relationships with Neon Sun. <laughs> Very different book to the first two. There is almost no darkness in it, just some shadows from the paper um, rip that I tried to design there. It is very light and is very, well, literally light, <laughs> but also, but also color, color-wise light. And again, that is deliberate because this book is about love and my experience, as well as the way that I view and express love. So I did not want any darkness or any part of that to be in this book. So I hope that helped. And I also would like to say to not give up on your dreams.
Another aspect that I wish I knew early on because it took me a while to actually self-publish Bones and the reason for that is because I was hesitant by how I thought people may view me or my life or the way that I was writing about my life during that period. Understanding that, I would just love to share with you it doesn't matter what other people think because you're writing about yourself, your story, therefore it's your voice and your voice matters and it doesn't matter what other people have to say about it what matters is you are able to express yourself to the very depth that you would love to, which is through self-publishing. So do not give up and do not let anybody else's negativity get you down or affect you. Because I want to see you succeed and I want to see you publish your work because each time I do it, it gets more and more exciting and almost addictive. <laughs> so share with me your progress. I would love to hear if this is helping you. Thank you so much for watching. If you do have any other questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll get back to you. Bye.